Hey Keith, long time fan here. I cancelled my Patreon and just kind of wanted to say goodbye. I just don't enjoy single player let's plays with multiple hosts and that seems to be the direction you are taking your channel. I hope you have continued success and I wish you all the best. Nice! Cordial, polite, all that stuff. It's neat. Uh, no conflict here. But uh, I just wanted to address this letter, not letter, uh, comment that I received, message I received, I don't know, semantics. Uh, and I was, I was, I started off by just responding, typing a response up to them, and then it kind of became a, became a grander and grander and longer and more detailed response. I'm like, okay, maybe this will be a blog post, and now I'm just kind of like, maybe I'll just read this out as a video, because it's a nice little PSA channel update thing, because uh, you know, I, I knew, I saw, I felt this coming, this kind of feedback about the current situation because I definitely saw the coincidence of the situation of like and what was going to happen on the overall schedule and what it looks like and how some people might react to that and so I've been meaning to kind of say something about it and so sure why not <laughs> now that I've already invested in writing all that I've written today I might as well just read this out to everybody and then everyone's on the same page that happens to watch this particular video about the situation of like what's going on with Stephanie and the amount of commentary that's solo versus not solo and so on. This will hopefully clear a lot of that stuff up. So so begins what I've started writing, I suppose. To be clear, that's not some permanent or long-term change for the channel. There just so happens to be a confluence of overlapping situations. Goose Game was just a funny little comedy game people have been asking for, and it seemed best to have someone to laugh with. We actually recorded it weeks ago, but Silent Hill was temporarily plugging up the Indian puzzle slot, so it came out now, giving the impression of an overlap of it overlapping with other content on your end of things when it's actually a delayed release from our end of things. So as far as details go there, the, uh, the idea is that when we recorded that, there was no Stephanie content on the entire channel. It was after Obscure, but before anything else was coming out. Uh, but, you know, Silent Hill was a very long game. <laughs> uh, definitely longer than the first and second games by a bit. But it, it took up the majority of a month, and so I couldn't put out any indie or puzzle game. So uh, Goose Game's coming out now when it happens to be overlapping with some other Stephanie projects. When otherwise it would have been a bit of a more slow metering out. Back to the letter. The Goose Game will immediately be followed by, most likely, by me doing some solo playthroughs of Manifold Garden, Super Liminal, and Black Said. This is all very tentative. I don't like making promises about my future schedule because even I don't know it that well. New options show up, show themselves daily, and my landscape of choices may look different when it's time to pick a new game. But that's, you know, tentatively what I'm looking at right now is like, uh, Manifold Garden, I've been looking forward for that for years. That just came out. Superliminal just came out and it caught me by surprise, but it looks neat. And Black said, I read all those comics and I, I don't know, I'm counting that as indie, I guess. I'm thinking. That said, I do, in fact, also have future co commentary on a solo game planned, but it's always on a case by case basis. I had an idea that After Party, a single player game, quote, in, in quotes, uh, with two protagonists, could be handled in a cool way if the controller changed hands whenever the protagonists changed characters. I need I need to uh, take a closer look at how well this would work, but it's an idea I've had for a while with these sorts of games. I wanted to try it with Heavy Rain, but never got the chance. You know, the idea of each each of the four characters is controlled by a different player. Then it was mechanically supported by the likes of two, Beyond Two Souls and Man of Madan, to my delight. Then we have two very special cases. I don't like Pokemon. I like the little creatures themselves well enough, but I don't really like the games they're in. But the audience often shows an interest in the series. I found a solution for this with Pikachu and with the Pikachu and Eevee game, which was to outsource the enthusiasm to one of my more Poke-centric friends. Last time was Marty, this time is Stephanie. This means I get to hang out, talk about the designs, do dumb voices for the characters, and otherwise hang out and carry the content with the co with other conversations along the way. You know, instead of the usual thing where I criticize the mechanics that I'm stuck interacting with for dozens of hours because I like... That's just a typo. Good job, me. Because I think Pokemon isn't a great RPG. Tedious, even. Which is why covering it myself would be kind of pointless because I already know my opinion going in. Unlike most of my blind playthroughs, because Pokemon is essentially the same game it was when I was a kid. 
this is my way of satisfying public wishes while being the least dickish along the way. This is essentially the playthrough I've been training Stephanie for, when I realized just how much of a fan she was of the series, playing every game, doing various Nuzlocks, having merch, remembering favorite custom-named Pokemon from yesteryear. I knew she had a great chance of being Marty's local replacement for this sort of thing. After all, Pokemon Let's Go Eevee got stuck in purgatory for months because we had to coordinate schedules and drive for hours for it to happen, so it had to sit in the multiplayer when it happens time slot and survive on hopes and dreams. But with Stephanie, I have the chance to do a Pokemon series from beginning to end as a daily series this time, just like other single player games, without you guys being stuck with me complaining the whole time that I'm just pressing the same attack most of the time and wow, this is just the same fight over and over again, huh? Instead, I'm like, ha, look at that dumbass. Let's name him Jean Shorts. Uh, so I'm just having fun with that. I forgot to mention the training part, which isn't that important. But when I say I was training, in quotes, Stephanie, it's that I tried other shorter, more disposable playthroughs with her to give her a trial run so that she would then, I would then know how well she would run handle this whole idea of doing Let's Plays with me so that I can then commit to something like Pokemon more confidently, because it would suck if I just jumped straight in with Pokemon with her, and it's like, hey, we're going to do a two-month-long series that we're going to try to finish. Oh, no, this isn't working at all. Because I've met a number of people that I get along with, but I, they, they just can't do Let's Plays for some reason. Like, they don't have any kind of, like, cadence or stage presence or... They don't think of speaking and they just can't present. It's weird. But Stephanie has been great. But my test run, which I meant to say in this letter and when I was writing this up, was uh, obscure, that, uh, so th which was also uh, an event thing. And it was all, it was, you know, many birds, one stone. I needed a horror game for the horror event. I also have been wanting to do obscure for ages because it's local only. And I was trying to uh, test run in a, in a shorter, more disposable game that people don't really care about as, as much. Uh to prep for the big release, which was the fact that I knew Pokemon Sword and Shield was coming out. So this has been something I've been planning on hopefully doing for a while. And I and I tried to handle it as smartly as possible. But the process of practicing with, with Stephanie was itself more Stephanie content that might have been seen as a glut of me going further in that direction as a channel direction when it's more like I was prepping for this series specifically. Whereas in the future, Stephanie stuff is more tempting, more likely to be in the same multiplayer slots as all the stuff with Andrew and Bird and Marty and Effie and Colonel RPG and so on. With stuff only occasionally going back into the main, main, main normal daily slots when it's like, no, we're committing to this as being a daily series and we're going to really crank this one out and so on. But even that's like kind of all over the place. I don't know. Slots are kind of arbitrary. Back to the letter. <laughs> Then we have Death Stranding, a game I respect and fear. <laughs> I, I write so dramatically. I always thought I would like Death Stranding, and I've been excited to see Kojima's insanity unleashed, his overlong cutscenes, his gameplay as metaphor, the absurd mechanical depth of games like Metal Gear Solid 3 and Metal Gear Solid 5. I couldn't wait. Only one problem. I have to let's play it. You see, I always thought the game would be interesting, but I also thought it might be boring. The good boring, or at least the interesting boring, where I'm not actively annoyed with what's going on, but it sure is taking a while, huh? And then I saw various estimations that the game might be 50 hours long. Oh no. That's a lot of hours of me running around in open fields and delivering packages while trying to do my damnedest to think of anything to talk about, huh? That could be... not great. The audience gets bored, and I get frustrated by the dozens of hours of stuff that's hard to talk about, so people, so perhaps I get more frustrated with the game itself than is really due for what... It, it's more, more frustrated than due for just being what it was always going to be. Not a great situation, potentially. But hey, Stephanie's here. She's been keeping up with the whole Kojima and Silent Hills situation. She she loves Indian horror films just like me. And we're watching those opening hours of absurd cutscenes with the wide eyes and bated breath and feeding off each other's curious energy fully engaged. So as solutions go, it seems like a great one. So as you can see, this is all very much on a case-by-case -case basis. There are certain games where it makes a lot of sense for me to bring someone along, but still, m m but still many more... Gotta fix my typos, even though... Yeah, I'll probably just uh, copy-paste this whole thing somewhere. But I, I've, I've made some typo mistakes. <laughs> but still many more. 
most even, uh, where my usual approach would clearly be preferred. Unfortunately, as I often say, I am faced with binary, mutually exclusive choices where I must, uh, when it comes to these issues, I have to side with one preference or the other, which permanently leaves those who wished I chose the opposite in the dark. Just know that, no, this is not currently becoming a co-commentary channel. Most of the time, videos that feature anyone besides me at all are still planned for those multiplayer exclusive time slots at the end of the day. It's just that these particular playthroughs are ones that I want to give a proper daily time slot. Or in the case of Death Stranding, it was chosen for me, because, you know, Patreon game, you guys picked that. Uh, but they also feel like they're best handled with another person along for the ride. This might be rough for fans that don't like the format. After all, once Goose Game ends, only three of the five, five main slots will be solo. The Let's Try slot, the Puzzle slash Indie slot, and the RPG slot. While Death Stranding and Pokemon will likely be co-commentated playthroughs for the better part of the next two months. But pretty much all of the potential follow-ups, potentially, Surge 2, Blasphemous, Astral Chain, Luigi's Mansion 3, Link's Awakening, Greedfall, Outer Worlds, Code Vein, etc. are all games that would be solo playthroughs, so no, this is not where the channel is going to be as a whole. It's just convenient or inconvenient timing for when a bunch of playthroughs happen to line up. But hey, no amount of explanation is going to make someone enjoy content they don't enjoy, so fair enough. Just know that this is not the planned trajectory for the channel. It's more of a de facto special event spawned from the many different reasons given above. So if you're one of the people who feels left out by the current lineup, perhaps consider checking back in a couple of months. You may be pleasantly surprised. At the moment, I would recommend treating the current schedule less as a new direction for the channel and more like a schedule where you just happen to not like any of the current games being played, because that is functionally a more applicable comparison. And unfortunately, that's a risk every single time the schedule refreshes. But that's also the good news. If you don't like it, it'll all get replaced soon enough. You know, and that's the end of my letter. You know, the Wheel of Eternity keeps... Spinning on and on. Because, uh, yeah, there's always the people that are like, I don't like any of the current games. And it's like, sorry, they'll be over eventually, and then new ones will happen. And uh, I'll be here indefinitely. So, uh, hope you stick around if that's your jam. But, you know, everyone's free to make their own ch choices. There are tens of thousands of you, which I, I said out loud and I still can't process as being a reality. But yeah, that's the thing going on. Hopefully no one feels too... Uh, hopefully it's not too much of like a betrayal for anyone that I did this for the Patreon series because it is a voted thing. I know that once upon a time uh, when uh, the... When Zero Escape was nominated and did not even come close to winning, let's be clear. Uh, as far as I can remember at least. Uh, not Zero Escape, 999. Uh, I did eventually decide to start doing it with Andrew. And so there were some people that were like, this is a grand betrayal because you're doing this with Andrew. And ah, we want you to do this solo. Which the coin is flipped at this point because nowadays people are like, don't you dare play the third game without Andrew. Uh, ever. Ah, it, it won't be the same. Uh, which... Uh, this is just kind of funny how that it goes back and forth like that, but that's that's what that, that's after we've gone through the whole thing, of course. But yeah, like similarly, like, I'm sorry if anyone specifically really wanted this to be a solo solo Death Stranding playthrough, but I really do think that over the course of the playthrough, it being a two person thing is going to be probably for the best. Uh, I'm sorry if you don't like the talking during cutscenes, although I am I am editing it. I'm trying to edit it pretty carefully. Like I'm actually cutting out a lot of the commentary. Uh, and I'm leaving in like the jibs and jibes that feel seem that feel like a little bit more like meaty or taste or worth including, whereas some of the smaller remarks I'm actually just cutting out of the commentary entirely. So there's actually less commentary than there was in the real version. Uh, Cause I'm trying to like do that. I also try to slightly rearrange the commentary sometimes so that it lands not when it actually was said, but in the space between the people talking. So I like slightly slide it over so it doesn't overlap the text here and there. I try. It's a lot of video to edit, so I might miss some parts and not be as careful with some parts of it than I am with other parts because I'm kind of scanning through it and kind of 
you know, speed editing. I don't watch, I don't edit my videos by watching them in real time because that would be impossible, uh, the amount of editing that would take. But I am doing these little touches here and there when I see like a main cutscene is happening. I, re I rearrange certain things here and there just a bit to like kind of make the thing more uh, digestible and palatable and make it more reasonable for the people that don't want us to talk during the cutscenes to make it like, well, we're not talking during the exact dialogue at least some of the time, although, you know, Sometimes you get those parts in Death Stranding where those holograms that just keep fucking monologuing for like five minutes straight and they're not doing like big plot things, but more so just kind of giving you logistical monologues for very, very long times. And sometimes that might get talked over a bit, but also like sometimes the game never stops talking, uh, which is rough. But uh, you know, it's a learning experience and, I'm, and we're, we're trying our best uh, and hopefully you like it. But if you don't, that's just this playthrough. Don't take it. Don't see it as like the new way the channel is. Uh, it's a bit of a an apocalyptic response, although not an entirely unreasonable one. Because I definitely I felt the idea of it. Because I definitely felt this criticism coming of like, oh, is it just going to be a two person channel now? And it's like, no, that's not the plan. But you can. But I could see why people could see that as the as it ramps up over time, the way that it has. Uh, this might have been less pronounced if uh, Goose Game came out sooner, but Silent Hill pushed it further and further back until so it came out at the same time as the other thing. So it's, it became a thing where like there was like three Stephanie premieres over the course of like two days or something. And that was very much not the intention, but it just kind of was how things lined up. But this is a particular spike and not the new norm. So that's that. Although it is kind of funny thinking back to like, these comments about like ah oh, the new ah oh, uh, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna become a two person channel it's just it's it that's funny to me just because the, in 2011 that's what we were is Andrew and I started as a two person channel and it was only in 2013 two full years later that I started kind of doing solo stuff on the side and even that was a side project for years and it was and it's like for like half of my overall YouTube career I was mostly a two person uh commentator and it's only even like more recently i was doing so heavily focused on the solo stuff because it became my job and only my job and that's the thing about people like stephanie and andrew and bird and any, any of these other people uh none of them can become permanent fixtures of the channel they all kind of just are here for the time that they have uh and how much time that they can offer me uh and you know when i need them and when when a particular game calls for other people in the first place and, uh, and, and that's that. None of them are going to become permanent cast members that are around every day or are in all of my videos necessarily, uh, cause I cannot afford to pay employees. <laughs> so they all have their own lives and jobs and homes and careers and, and everything else going on in their lives. And so the only way you can really bring someone on as a permanent cast member anyway would be to actually hire them. And, uh, maybe someday that's a thing. Like, maybe at some point in my career, uh, things get so high up there that I can, like, bring on a certain person as, like, a permanent cast member where, like, here's the X person time slot where I do a video with X person, and that's an everyday thing forever, as opposed to coming and going and slipping in and slipping out, and sometimes there's a lot of them, and sometimes they vanish for months, uh, but until that, the, it's not even really a possibility to entertain. But anyway, this is the general update. Even with me writing it all out, it just became long, but this <laughs> took a long time to write this out. So I was like, I should I should recoup my losses here and make a video out of this. And also it's a general PSA that, uh, or not P PSA is not the right thing to call it probably. I don't know, someone corrected me about that. Uh, channel update about what's going on. So if you were curious or uncertain or worried, then here's the information uh, about what's going on and how to best process this context and all that. I'm going to stop now because it's been 20 minutes. See ya. <laughs>